Greetings to our viewers. I am Nel Vilor Avilas Coliamat from the beautiful campus of Central Philippine Adventist College. January is declared as a National Bible Month. In celebration of this, we are going to learn more about the Lord and His Word, the Bible. And so I welcome all of you to Give Me the Bible. Our speaker today is the Dean of the School of Theology of Central Philippine Adventist College, Dr. Jesse Aragon, Jr. But before he speaks, we will all be singing our theme song for this month, Give Me the Bible. I hope you'll be blessed. Give me the Bible, star of gladness gleaming, to cheer the wonder, lone and tempest tossed. No storm can hide the peaceful radiance beaming Since Jesus came to seek and save the lost Give me the Bible, holy message shining Thy light shall guide me in the narrow way Precept and promise, love and love combining Till night shall vanish in eternal day be the Bible when my heart is broken, when sin and grief have filled my soul with fear. Give me the precious words by Jesus spoken, all that faith's empty, show my Savior near. Give me the Bible, holy message shining, thy light shall guide me in the narrow way. Precept and promise, love and love combining, till night shall vanish in eternal day. Give me the Bible, all my steps enlighten, teach me the danger of this realm's below. The lamp of safety or the gloom shall brighten, that light alone the path of peace can show. Give me the Bible, holy message shining, thy light shall guide me in the narrow way. Precept and promise, love and love combining, till night shall vanish in eternal day. I am wishing each one a very happy new year, and I pray that this year will bring us blessings and that we can finally end our battle against COVID-19. I would like to commend our beloved president for declaring January as the National Bible Month. And this was issued in his proclamation number 124 and also for setting every last week of January as the National Bible Week. In his uh, presidential speech, he said, History has seen the profound impact of the religious scripture, the basis of all Christian religious worldwide, on the life of nations and how it has moved and inspired many people, including statesmen and social reformers, to work for the betterment of their fellow human beings, even at great cost to themselves. It's wonderful to think that our president saw the impact of reading the scripture in the lives of our countrymen, of our statesmen, of reformers, and for a cause. And for this, we would like to thank and praise the Lord for such a wonderful and generous gesture from our national leader. In relation to this celebration, we will be having a series of studies in relation to the importance of Bible reading, the importance of Bible study, which eventually will have a better and good impact in a relationship. And to start with, allow me to read our financial, uh, our fundamental beliefs one. I read, the Holy Scripture, Old and New Testaments are the written word of God given by divine inspiration through holy men of God who spoke and wrote as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. In this word, God has committed to man the knowledge necessary for salvation. 
the Holy Scripture are the infallible revelation of His will. They are the standard of character, the test of experience, the authoritative revealer of doctrines, and the trustworthy record of God's act in history. Now in this study, let us focus our attention to the doctrine of biblical revelation. The question posited by a famous author, Richard Rice, is this. Can man find by searching God? This is a profound question. Can we know or discover anything about God ourselves? Well, his answer was obviously no. We can't know anything about God unless He reveals Himself to us. Why? Simply because of sin. The communication process between God and man, the theophany or the face-to-face -face communication was destroyed because of sin. And for this reason, man can no longer talk to God face-to-face, -face, neither God can talk to man face-to-face. -face. Thus, the Lord need revelation. Thus, we need revelation in order for us to know God. And this is the reason why revelation was given by God. Now, wonderful. God has provided us two, not only one, but two forms of revelation. The first revelation is what we term general revelation. This form of revelation is evident in God's handiwork, God's creation, His creative act. He provided in order for us to know a glimpse about God Himself. We can read the Bible text in Psalms chapter 19, verse 12, which says, The heavens proclaim the glory of God. The skies display His craftsmanship. Day after day, they continue to speak. Night after night, they make Him known. Wonderful. This is the thing that was revealed to us by the psalmist. The nature reveals the glory of God. The evidence, how the universe, the whole creation was fine-tuned, give us a glimpse that we did not just exist by chance, but we have a designer, we have a creator. There is an author, an architect, a designer who thoughtfully designed the whole universe and us humans. The whole creation reveals his handiwork. The whole creation reveals His wondrous glory, His almighty power, His unfathomable wisdom, and His majesty. Listen to what Hebrews chapter 1, verse 3 says. He is the radiance of the glory of God and the exact imprint of His nature. And He upholds the universe by the word of his power wonderful amazing how god started revealing himself to us to us to humans and that is evident in the fine work of his creation general revelation the second revelation that god used in order to reveal himself to us is what we term special revelation this revelation is a disclosure of God Himself through the means of His Word. This form of revelation comes in two types. First is the written Word, which is what we have now, the Scripture itself. 2 Timothy 3.16 says, all Scripture is given by the inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Notice that Paul said all Scriptures. 
and this includes both the Old and the New Testament. There is no reason for us to discard the Old Testament and only accept the New, because Paul says all scriptures, all the New Testament. Even when Jesus was here on earth, he was referring to the Old Testament when he gave the emphasis on the importance of the scripture. There was no New Testament then during his time. But when Paul, when, his, uh, when he wrote this one, he was also referring to the Old Testament. There was no New Testament during his time. So, we can see here the importance of the emphasis of the old scripture, whole scripture, the whole scripture, which was given as a revelation of God to man. The written word. Nonetheless, God provided us another form of this revelation. Not only in the form of a written word, but amazingly, He provided us another form of the word. And this is what we call the living word, which is referring to Christ himself. Christ himself took our nature. John chapter 1, 1, 14 says, In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, a word was with God and the word was God. And verse 14 says, And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. This was the reason of the past Christmas season. The living word came to us. And his name shall be called Emmanuel, which means God with us. The word became flesh and dwelt with us. He was with us. And so, special revelation comes both in the form of a written word, which is the scripture, and secondly, the living word, which is God made flesh for us. It does not follow the idea that since God is unlimited, when he inspired man to write the scripture, man becomes unlimited. No, man still is limited. Immortal God, when he inspired man to write the Bible, man remains mortal, limited, finite, imperfect, sinner, and so, the reason that when God inspired Peter to write the scripture, Peter did not automatically got his PhD degree. Peter remained as a fisherman. He spoke like a fisherman. He acts like a fisherman. He wrote like a fisherman. He smells like a fisherman because Peter was a fisherman. That's why it's easy for us to understand the writings of Peter compared to the writing of Paul. Because Paul was... Uh, related with the, the nature of law, he was a lawyer, and thus he spoke about different way compared to that of Peter. And so here is a nature of inspiration wherein humanity and divinity was combined together as one. Thus, since humans are imperfect, there will be some seeming errors that we can find in the scripture. Nonetheless, we need not worry because these seeming errors does not discredit the authenticity and the perfect message that God is presenting to man. The message remains perfect. Though the way it was written was quite erroneous because of the human, human imperfection in it the human contribution on the scripture, but the message remains 100% perfect. Let me illustrate to you by giving only two examples that you can find in the scripture. The first example is found in 1 Kings chapter 7, verse 26. This talks about the lavern that is outside Solomon's temple. Uh, filled with water before the priest get inside the temple they have to wash their hands you know and get inside as the ritual before when they enter the temple and according to first kings the water in the lavern contains about 2,000 baths however referring to the same container in second chronicles chapter 4 verse 5 it mentions that it is it was 3,000 baths 
about nine or 10 gallons of water. Now the question is, who is telling the truth? Kings or Chronicles? So some discrepancy that we can find here in these two passages. Interestingly, the container, the lovern was discovered and they were able to reconcile these discrepancies by measuring the water in two different measurements. First Kings measured the water on the neck of the lover, and Second Chronicles measured on the brim. So one is 2,000, the other is 3,000, a difference of 1,000. Now we see the discrepancy here does not invalidate the message. The message is there. The lavern contains the water. The water symbolizes Christ cleansing act. The water symbolizes Christ, the water of life. The message remains perfect. Though the way it was written was seemingly erroneous because of the human contribution, but the message remains there. It's perfect. The second example is found in the book of Numbers 25 verses 9 to 24 and uh, 1 Corinthians 10 verse 8. It talks about the number of casualties in the wilderness. Remember the story when God cursed the people, the Israelites, because of their disobedience. And according to Numbers the number that the, the people died in the wilderness were about 24,000. Interestingly, Paul, referring to the same situation, the same event, mentioned that there were about 23,000. Again, a difference of 1,000 who is telling the truth. Numbers or Paul? Unfortunately, there is no reconciliation about this, unlike the archaeological findings. But here, we can see that the message remains perfect. There was death in the wilderness because of the disobedience of the people. But sometimes, because of human contribution, discrepancies may appear, but the message is there. Just like in the uh, counting of the casualties of COVID-19 in our country. The Sun Star mentioned there were about 8,000 people. The Inquirer mentioned about close to 9,000 people who is telling the truth, the Sun Star or the Inquirer. A difference, but the message remains perfect. The, it does not say that because there was a difference of the number of deaths of casualties, there was no COVID-19 death. There was. Death is there. The death of the people because of COVID-19. The death of the people because of their disobedience. The message remains perfect. It's just like a man writing a love letter, an uneducated lover, because of his background, the spelling might be wrong, his grammar might be wrong, but these do not discredit his love to the lady whom he expressed his love through his letter. When he said, I love you with all my heart, he means that even there was some error in his expression because of lack of educational background, grammar, so on, and so forth. And so, the pen of inspiration reinforced this statement in her words, the Lord has preserved his holy book by his own miraculous power in its present shape. The message of the Bible is perfect. The message of the Lord is there. He became a man and saved us from our sins. And so, I would like to 
ask this question, how then do we approach the Bible as we do our study? According to Martin Luther, I read, he said, we come to God's words as beggars, pleading for the Spirit's illuminating power. We have to acknowledge our need of the Lord. We have to acknowledge how God can help us. How we need the presence of the Lord in order for us to study the scripture, to understand the scripture. James chapter 4 verse 6 I read, But he giveth more grace, wherefore he saith, God resist the proud, but giveth grace to the humble. An Advent Review and Sabbath Herald, August 22, 1907, also said, We need to humble our hearts and with sincerity and reverence search the word of life for that mind alone that is humble and contrite can see light. We need the help of God as we study His words. We need to depend on Him. We need to acknowledge that us alone, left alone by God, can never understand His will for us. And so, finally, I would like to share this thought to you. The importance of prayer. As we study the words of the Lord, as we study the scripture, as we celebrate the National Bible Month, the National Bible Week, let us study the scripture prayerfully, with an open mind, with an open heart. Let us ask the Lord's power, His Holy Spirit, to illumine our minds, to illumine our hearts, and help us not only to study but to live the words in our lives. Then and only then, it can create an impact. According to our president, the impact, the change of the scripture in the lives of the people, of his countrymen, of our fellow Filipinos, of us all, it will help us be drawn more close to God and can make us better citizens, not only in this world, but in the world, in the hereafter. I'd like to read the statement from a famous author, Ellen White. She said, For in prayer we signal that we are in need of divine help in interpreting and understanding Scripture. In prayer we seek the illumination of our minds through the same Holy Spirit who inspired the biblical writers to write what they wrote. In prayer, we ask God to open our eyes to His Word and to give us a willing spirit to follow and practice His truth. Friends, countrymen, let us take this opportunity to study the words of God. Let us take this opportunity to allow the Spirit of the Lord to talk to us and to reveal His will and make us better citizens, not only in this world, but above all, in the world to come. Let us bow our heads as we pray. Heavenly Father, we give you all the glory and honor and praises for revealing yourself to us through your written word, and through yourself, the living word. Help us, O oh Father, to open our hearts and our minds. And as we study your words, may the truth that we can find in it, can find shelter in each of our hearts, and make us a better person, a person that will make us ready to meet you in the air when you soon shall come. Thank you, O oh God, for your blessings. 
and for hearing our prayers. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise the Lord for that wonderful message. It's now time for our quiz. So I will be reading two questions, and if you know the answer, please send your answers through the mobile number that will be flashed on your screen. So here is question number one. How is God and man united with each other? How is God and man united with each other? And question number two, what does the water symbolize? What does the water symbolize? So please send us your answers if you know them. Thank you so much for joining us today. I hope that you can join us again tomorrow for another wonderful message at the same time. May the Lord continue to guide us as we continue to seek Him and learn His will for us. Happy New Year and God bless you. Shining, thy light shall guide me in the narrow way. Percept and promise, love and love combining, till night shall vanish in eternal day. Give me the Shall be.